that gets you closer to God is your willingness to change.
believe that when the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will dance like David, I will sing like David, and I will praise like David. Amen. You ready to do this with us? Yeah? Once again, come on out. Put your hands together, church. Spirit of the Lord is within my heart. I will sing like David sang. David song okay it says down the river down the mountain the river flows amen and it brings refreshing wherever it goes yeah let's do it I need you to put your hands together come on out church you can do better
Lord. Yes, Father, we rejoice in your presence, Lord, because you alone deserve it, Father. You're the God that has always been faithful. You're the God that has stood with us through thick and thin, and we know you're the same God that was there yesterday, the same God that is there today, and you're going to be the same God that is going to be there to tomorrow. No matter what happens, Lord, you're going to be there, and we know that, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness on our lives, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your hedge of protection that is always on us, O oh Lord. And we give you praise today, Father. Come on, church. Let's all just lift our voices and thank this amazing God that has always been there with us. He has always been faithful. He has never left our side. Come on, church. Let's all just lift our voices and pray. Come on, praise, praise, praise. He alone deserves this, Lord. You're the God of Abraham, you're the God of Jacob, you're the God that has been there alone. You're the same God that was there in the lion's den, you're the same God that was there with Isaac and Abraham, and you're the same God that is going to be there with us. Oh, 
God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Yeah, yeah. Though history can prove there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storm may come and the wind may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. We say, Great is your faithfulness to me. Oh, great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting, same I will pray. Remains to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Though history can prove there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storm may come and the wind may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart know when you speak a word, it will come to pass.
why you won't tear down coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. He gave his one and only son for us. Come on, church. No wall you won't kick down. Luke chapter 22 verse 19 and 20 and Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body given to you do this in remembrance of me the same way after the supper he took the cup saying this is a cup in new covenant in my blood which I poured out for you this morning we have gathered here to worship God to 
celebrate the holy communion and to hear the counsel of god god never send anyone empty handed every person who have come to this auditorium or listening to me online with an expectant heart will be ministered by the holy spirit god will speak to you today and you have a privilege to worship god when people look at the dead mute dumb things to worship people are calling things out hands but cannot work this is mouth cannot speak things of legs cannot walk things of ears cannot hear people are crying to those dead dumb mute idols that can't hear can't get but you are privileged you are come to the city of the living god you are come to the house of the lord you are come to a god who is awake you are come to a god who never sleep or numb near a slumber you are a god you have come to a god who promise that he'll watch over you how many of you to thank jesus this morning jesus came to the world to build a bridge between man and god jesus came to tear down the separation between man and god jesus came to show us a way to eternal life jesus came to connect us back to god what a great privilege we have that we don't need to pay sacrifices we don't need to do rituals what a great privilege we have that we have jesus in our heart what a great privilege we have we have the ministry of the angels around us what a privilege we have we have the holy spirit within us to lead us guide us teach us comfort us enable us church will you lift your hands and thank god the father for sending his son jesus apostle paul says like this in in hebrews therefore let's go to the throne of grace with the boldness to receive the grace and mercy in the time of our need we do not have a high priest who do not sympathize with our problem we have a high priest who was tested tried and tempted in every aspect just like you and me he did need an animal to be sacrificed uh, he himself became the sacrifice he made a covenant with you with his own blood which cannot be broken by any demons or any power of this world what a great savior what a great promise what a great privilege how many of you would lift your hands and say lord thank you for your work thank you for your promise thank you for your presence thank you for your protection thank you lord even if i walk away you will never walk away even if i become faithless you will remain faithful many a time when i went away wandering here and there lost in sin thank you that you came you called me you took me you picked me you brought me back to your fold we want to remember your goodness on this communion table we want to thank you for all the work you've done bless this communion oh god we break this bread in the memory of your body that's broken for us we take this bread in memory of your body that's crushed for us and you told us unless we eat your flesh and drink your blood we have no part with you father this bread and this cup speaks of your word and your spirit we receive it this morning with the reverence with the brokenness with the repentance with an absolute surrender lord we pray that you make us whatever you want us to be not our will but yours be done in jesus name let's serve the communion I spoke a word Hallelujah. you were singing oh me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me I've 
been so, so kind to me Before I spoke a word Before I spoke a word You were singing over me You have been so, so good to me took a breath, you read your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. close your eyes as you're holding this cup and this bread remember the words of Jesus he said this is my body which is broken for you he took the cup and said this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood and he told us to do this in remembrance of him let's remember Jesus on the cross let's remember the great work he has done for us Let's remember the great commission that he gave to us to go and make disciples of all the world. Let's remember the commandment he gave us, love each other as I have loved you. Learn to forgive those who offended you. Give away to the poor and the needy. Your God will open the windows of heaven, shower the blessings in such a way there'll be no room to hold. We are called to love people. We are called to give. We are called to help the poor. We are called to preach the gospel. We are called to remember this beautiful savior, wonderful master in our life who promised that he'll be with us always. With his words, with a prayer, let's have the communion together in Jesus' name. No shadow you won't light up 
Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down That you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today we have more empty chairs than last week. So we all need to pray more. We, God enable us to build uh, this hall uh, to fill it. Amen. So all of us, all of us are evangelists. All of us. What is evangelism? Is one beggar telling another beggar where to find the food. That's all. Without Christ, everyone is lost. Everyone. So we have a mission to reach to them. See, Catholic Church will send you only to purgatory. Then you have to hang on there waiting for the masses to come up. If they stole the mass and you came to the entrance of heaven and they stop saying mass, you're stuck. You're hanging on the door of heaven. Can't get in because mass is not coming to push you up. So it's very uncertain. And no, I asked some priests that how many mass I have to say for my mother to go to heaven because I love my mother. He said, I don't know. So that means you're simply collecting money from us. You don't even know how many. But we have an assurance God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believe in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. You have a guaranteed passport visa stamped. Your house is getting ready in heaven. Amen. Don't worry how many times you muck up, get yourself up and clean it. Clean up yourself and start walking. Amen. Someone said you are not a failure till you accept that you're a failure. Till that, every mistake, you're learning how to not to fail. So when you fail, or when you make a mistake, you make sure that dust off and get up and say, I learned one more way how not to fail. But if you keep on failing the same, you need whacking from God. Okay? You need whacking from God. So we have an assurance, we have a wonderful God. So... We, it's a beautiful to know Jesus. It's beautiful to serve Jesus. Look around what all nonsense people are doing in the name of God. But we, we are free. Are you free? How many of you are really free? You sure? Good. So every day morning there's a prayer meeting here. I invite all of you to come at least one day, two day, three day, four days, or all five days. Monday to Friday, every morning there's prayer in the church. Abraham, Rachel, Camillo is coming regularly now. We pastors, many of them comes. So come and join to pray. If you have no work, even if you have work, put, it, put everything aside, come for prayer. After prayer, join with us for a nice lunch and a fellowship, then you can go. So every morning, Monday to Friday, we have a prayer, 10 to 1. Please come and join. And um, those who have come for the first time, we like to welcome you. Thank you very much for coming. And please meet us before you go. We li like to have coffee with you. You have made a best choice by coming today here. And God will definitely bless you and speak to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, now the time of few announcements. First announcements, we are having, going to have a night of prayer. Mm. I didn't eat anything, man. I think too much of Holy Spirit, I think. I have a two beef crockets. I do this size. This size stomach, this type crockets, what will work? In Malayalam, we say, Anavai lambaranga and Avai kumbalanga. It means 
in the mouth of the elephant is like one small you know what is that gherkin but in a rat's mouth is like a big pumpkin so act two nothing maybe full of holy spirit okay thank you <laughs> so uh, we are going to have a night of prayer on 17th night 10 10 o'clock to 4 a.m. in the morning and uh, you sleep early and come if any of you have a transport problem call us we all are ready to come and pick you drop you dump you whatever you want okay but we start 10 o'clock we're going to pray till 4 o'clock amen prayer is powerful amen, amen. hallelujah many things i do i look around and say god i'm not able i keep finding so many failure in me i keep finding so many inability and i feel depressed sometimes then i look around and say but thank god so many things happen yeah yeah with all my defects all my you know how useless i am correct so many of you put up with me in lot of mistakes but thank god his grace yeah. covers the multitude of your sin and all your weakness amen, amen. amen. you amen, amen. hallelujah So don't worry come for prayer. We're going to pray together. Maybe Patrick will come join. I'm not sure. He's a guest so we can't bother him. And the next is we're going to have a children's get together on 16. Evening 4 o'clock. All the parents who are children send them here. Eh? 9 to 4. Oh my god. I've been making all blunders. i said other service okay morning to evening they are going to be entertained with a lot of fun and activities they all get up so 9 to 4 on 16th there's a children's get together and 17th fasting and 20th we are going to do a blood donation camp you know a lot of people come uh, go to hospital they want blood they keep calling us and some of us go and donate and we do blood donation camp in el shadai we collect the coupons and keep it so any time someone need we could help them so come and donate a pint of blood it gives life it, it helps some people who are when they are in going to operation some kind of danger situation accidents or anything it's always useful your blood get reproduced very fast don't worry you, by donating blood you get rid of all the bad blood you know there is when there is a bad blood it's so bad so you just give away one pint and you can donate frequently there is no problem it doesn't affect your health it makes your health better so on 20th morning we have a blood donation camp in the church please come and invite your friends also to come and donate the blood okay so these are the few announcements now the time to collect the tithes and offering the bag will be passed on kabhi kabhi hum is kolahal Ecclesiastes chapter 11 says this cast thy bread upon the water for thou shall find it after many days how many of you ever you heard about when you put a, a water bottle uh, out there in the ocean with a letter you know and somebody finds it but you know it's literally this and this is how our offering is so important and i like how it says it in i think it is the cev version be generous and some day you will be rewarded And you know what I've learned just be a giver keep giving because there's a reward there's a blessing that comes back when you give it says this if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth now do you know why it doesn't rain in the desert it's because it takes in order for it to rain it takes moisture to come up from the ground so something has to come up from the earth soil or from the earth in order for it to form as clouds that give back rain the same principle is true in giving if you never give anything or you're only afraid of the gas prices the economy and and all of that and you never give from the earth or from your position here in the earth then you will never live under the showers of blessing And so I've learned no matter what I'm not moved by what they say. I'm moved by what Jesus said. He said if I give it will be given back good measure pressed down shaken together running over. I I I do what Jesus said and and and, and God mentioned it in Malachi 3 if I tithe God said he would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you not have room to receive. Amen. Thank you very much. Now the time to hear the word. We have Pastor Paul Hallam from Manchester. He leads the church 
and he's a great missionary travel all around the world preaching the gospel and he loves people and he helped a lot of churches so pastor paul will be sharing the word we also yeah we also like to welcome pastor patrick and maria with us they are from sweden they are the pastors of our innocentio 29 years you still didn't manage to keep him quiet 29 years uh, innocence was trying to get them here in the last 3 4 years back um, I, maria's father came and blessed us and he said he wanted to come for the inauguration of the church but his visa arrived before that so he went home even he, he had a small issue went for an operation didn't work second operation he didn't come back straight went to heaven and uh, so maria had come her father said uh, call me for the inauguration so you are here we haven't had inauguration so far because we got a lot of work left okay you can have it down so patrick is a pastor maria runs a school uh, one of the prominent school there they will be ministering next sunday morning and uh, hopefully in between i think there's a ladies meeting and all different kind of stuff so well, let's welcome them to our faith community come on put your hands together welcome them and then over to pastor paul he's ready to preach he's going to preach to the fire and brimstone come on paul please thank you hello testing one two one two thank you there we go that's better good to see you hello testing wow um as i said before uh this is amazing this first time i've preached in this part of the building in your new auditorium so well done everyone i'm used to preaching in the in the basement so today we promoted yeah we've had a raise amen now those seats are very very comfortable almost too comfortable and those of you at the back i can see quite far with these glasses So if I see you sleeping I'll volunteer for you to come down and uh, share your testimony. Okay? I can see all right over there at the back. 1 2 3 rows in. I can see I can see you hiding. But more importantly the Lord can see you. Okay? <laughs> so oops. There's there's the flask on. It's so good to be with you again from Manchester. It's um It's been over a year since I was in India. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, there's reasons for that and um it was uh, such a joy to be back in a place that is like home from home for me. Um I spent some lovely time in Bangalore with good friends, good pastors, friends of mine. Um and in Tamil Nadu where we did quite a lot of work uh, last October we opened our 100th church building we've built in India um in in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands how about that no I've never been there um but our our projects manager in India he went with a pastor from Bangalore they went on my behalf and they sent me the videos and everything it's so wonderful what god is doing we're building our 101st 102nd 103rd as i speak one in kanataka one two in tamil nadu and another one is just about to be built as well hopefully in gujarat so great please pray for us we want to carry on even though we've reached that that target that we set 20 years ago we reached we want to carry on and just keep building in actual fact the backs program build a church scheme we're looking to start building churches in africa too the first one will po- possibly be in uganda or zambia so i let you know exciting times jesus said i will build my church the gates of hell shall not prevail against it we are living in dark days it appears this morning that uh, iran has attacked israel I want to tell you right now not from me but from the book Israel will be here after everybody else will have gone Israel will stand 
Why? Because the promises of the Lord are a guarantee. He will not relay on his promise. It doesn't matter if 57 Arabic nations come after Israel, they will stand because Jehovah said it. And Jehovah meant it. And they'll still be here. So um, please let's pray. Let's pray. Um, we need to pray for many of the Muslims. Uh, I'm, I'm witnessing more and more to Muslims in our nation in the UK than ever before. Even one of my taxi drivers who was taking me to the airport, who was a white English convert to Islam, I was able to speak to him and challenge him, and he was nearly in tears. I, if, I'd, if I'd have had a longer ride, I'm sure I, I would have been able to lead him to Jesus. So I left my number with him, and um, it's amazing when they're challenged about the truth of God's word. They, 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 you know, God will back his word up. He won't back mine up. He will back his word. God will back his word. We need to start believing again in the power of the word of God. The word of God, the Bible. Read the Bible again. Y young people, read the Bible. I have an app that I, I, I actually put it, got an app going called Binge the Bible. It's free. You can read the Bible in 12 months, nine months, or six months. You can read it through the pattern, and you can binge the Bible. Instead of binging your favorite TV series, you can binge the Bible. It will change your life. It will change the way you view things and understand things. It will give you the knowledge of the Most High. So um, I just put that in there. The Bible reading uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to come to you on this one now uh, is from the book of Genesis and the reason why I said that about Israel before it's quite pertinent to our reading um, this is from Genesis 25 verse 1 to 15 and I'll read it and we, we don't need to read it in another version do we we can just read so so this is from verse 1 then God said to Jacob arise go up to Bethel dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. That's very important. Hold that thought. The stress, the anxiety that Jacob was having, uh, the unrest, all of that. He uh, went to Bethel and there uh, the Lord appeared to him. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves, change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which are in their ears and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem. And they journeyed and the terror of God was upon all the cities that were around and about them and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz that is Bethel which is in the land of Canaan he and all the people who were with him and he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared to him and he fled from the face of his brother and Deborah Rebecca's nurse died and she was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree so the name of it was called Alon Bachuth then God appeared to Jacob again and he came from Paddan Aram and he blessed him and the Lord said to him your name is Jacob your name shall not be called Jacob anymore but Israel shall be your name so he called his name Israel also God said to him I am God Almighty be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you and kings shall come from your body the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you and your descendants after you I give you this land then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him so Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him a pillar of stone and he poured a drink offering upon it and he poured oil on it and Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him Bethel last night I spoke on uh, John chapter 2 verse 7 the zeal of your house has consumed me Jesus um, uh, actually if you remember he he turned over the tables in the temple and he took the whip and and the disciples remembered the verse of scripture from the psalm psalm 69 uh, the zeal of your house has consumed me and 
and I do believe that it's time that we also had a zealousness and enthusiasm and passion for God's house. I really do applaud the fact that we've got this amazing center, this church here in Mapsa, this beautiful building that I do believe, Matthew, you, it will be filled with people. It will be filled with the lost. They will be turned into the found. The weak will become strong. The poor will become rich. And um, this, this, this city of Mapsa will be better because the house of the Lord is being built in it. I believe you'll have an effect on the communities around and about even bigger and greater before. For me, the bigger the church of Jesus Christ, the greater the effects will be, the greater the fruitfulness will be. I believe it, 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 it's twinned into our communities and it should be, it should be. There's no point in having large mega churches and unchanged communities. That doesn't work. That's not, that doesn't work, something wrong. I see churches of tens of thousands and I see corruption and awfulness and wickedness all around them. This shouldn't be happening. Salt and light should change darkness and evil. And so we have to pray towards that end and we have to pray to become effective and channels of change and transformation. That's what the house of the Lord will bring when the house of the Lord is blessed and adorned by the presence of the Lord himself. Where the presence of the Lord is, things change. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is power, there is authority, there is supernatural ability to do the impossible. The first thing I want to say is that Bethel is the, the Hebrew for the house of God. The house of God has never really been a building. Never been a building. David referred to the house of God way before the first temple was ever built. He said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Psalm 122, verse 1. He also spoke in a shepherd's psalm about surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, where? In the house of the Lord. Well, the building, the house of the Lord didn't exist when he penned those words. The house of the Lord is the presence of God amongst his people. Not only here on earth, but in heaven. The house of the Lord is a lot bigger than you and I think it is. It reaches into other dimensions. It's not a one-dimensional place. There are angels and celestial beings that enter into the house of God, as we will see at Bethel. So if we were to read the first visit of Jacob in Bethel, in Genesis 28, we haven't got time to go into it now, but just please believe me, and you can go and read it back. Jacob was in stress, he had family problems, most of it brought on himself. Not all, but most of it. And he was anxious, he was stressed out. How many people know stress hasn't just been invented recently? Anxiety's been around forever. Stress has been around forever. It's a new word, but it's an old problem. And, and Jacob was stressed out. And he came to this place called Luz and he laid himself down to sleep and Genesis 28 says he dreamed a dream and in that dream he saw a ladder with angels ascending and descending it was a prophetic dream that the way to heaven will become opened praise God and I, I really have to say this the house of the Lord is the portal for that ascending and descending. Most people at, right at the moment are coming to faith, it's not only, but in the house of the Lord. We should expect in the house of the Lord for it to be a gateway into heaven, hallelujah. hallelujah. Anybody agree with me? A doorway into heaven. Every local church should be a doorway into heaven. Yeah. And a well of salvation where people can come and drink, be refreshed be restored wells and of course as we see here now in the house of the lord altars so we're going to pick this up right now and and bethel was first of all a place of revelation now i can say this to you absolutely that every christian born again christian has had a personal revelation if you haven't had a personal revelation yet you're not a christian because the light has to be turned on somewhere. <laughs> you have to come out of darkness. 
You have to see the light. It, do you know, I said this the other week, you can be born a Muslim, you can be born a Jew, but you can't be born a Christian. You decide to become a Christian. We've baptized over 100 people in the last few months. And I said, to, I said to the people who came to see the people getting baptized, you can be born a Muslim, you can be born a Jew, you cannot be born a Christian. Stop this lie that I've been a Christian all my life since I was born. Who made that decision for you? You can't make that decision when you're six months. You can't make it when you're two years old. There has to come a time when you make your decision. Christ is for me. And you won't make that until you have a revelation. And the revelation must be that Christ died for me that Christ gave his life for me so that now I am going to yield and give my life to Jesus Christ that has to come through revelation revelation often comes through preaching it comes through other ways as well but comes through preaching but Bethel was to Jacob a place of revelation and I and there's an analogy for us right there the house of the Lord Bethel is a place of revelation today I pray that this house the house of the Lord here becomes a place of revelation for people coming into the house they will hear a word of God they will be touched by the spirit of God and they shall be changed and transformed listen I believe this with all my heart it happened to me God can do more in a moment than I can do in a lifetime do you hear me say that? Listen, you could be here one day, you could come in an ordinary Sunday morning, a random, ad hoc, ordinary Sunday morning. You could come to the house of God one Sunday morning and you could be here and one of the preachers might just say one word and that one word goes into, not in your mouth, it goes into your heart, into your spirit and boom, you are set free by the word of God. You've got to expect that to happen in these last days because we're going to see a harvest like never before. We're going to see a harvest like never before. I was saying in the, in the first service, I mentioned it the other day, I had a dream last year that completely changed my ministry, changed the way I think things, changed the way I do things, it changed me completely this dream. And the dream I saw was of a traditional church building with, with, with absolutely filled to capacity. It wasn't a big church. It could only hold about 150 at the most. And it was packed to capacity and there was a crowd, a queue, trying to get in all the way round, all the way, what we used to call it, round the block, all the way round the street corners, trying to get in. And it was almost like the Lord saying there's going to come a time of desperation. We, we are running four Sunday, Sunday services at the moment, sometimes a fifth. And, 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 and after that dream, I, I looked out my office and I saw we, we, the name of the road outside our church, the lighthouse, is called the Broadway. Isn't that good? So the narrow way is right next to the Broadway. Ah. Get it? And I looked out and I saw Sunday morning... 11 o'clock, just coming up to 11 o'clock for our biggest service. It's just absolutely crammed, it's packed. Can't get in. People sat in the cafe, can't get in the auditorium. And I saw, for the first time, a queue of traffic. And I thought, is there a football match on? Because Manchester United's ground, you've heard of Manchester United, haven't you? Unfortunately. Manchester United, their football ground is just down the way from our building about a mile, a mile and a half from our building. And I thought, is there a match on today? No, there isn't, Paul. These are people coming to the lighthouse. They're coming to the house of the Lord. Now, you remember, you've got to remember the dream I dreamt about the cues. And I believe it was like a confirmation the Lord was saying, Paul, wake up, listen. Soon this is going to happen across the country to churches churches that did not even expect it I, I went to preach at one of our network churches theirs is a traditional building and I went to preach you could only fit 130 people in that church and I preached there was about 80 90 people in the church I saw salvation I saw healing I saw deliverance and I saw baptisms happen because of that service because God was in the house I have a lovely house my house is in the countryside. It's 160 years old. 
It's a beautiful cottage in the countryside because I couldn't stand living in the city any longer. But it's a lovely house, very small, very small house, beautiful, beautiful views. I love my house, but I do not love it anywhere near as much as I love the house of the Lord. I can honestly say that. The house of the Lord is unique. The house of the Lord is just nothing like it. The house of the Lord represents to me the tangible presence of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like that. My father was healed of cancer, serving communion in the house. I shared it last night. My, my wife, when she was my fiance, engaged to be married, was healed in the house of the Lord. I myself, last October, when I got sick when I was in Egypt, I had a thing called cryptosporidium from the water, a waterborne bacterial infection. 5,000 people every year in the UK die of it. I was so ill. I, would, I could hardly move. I lost so much weight. It's unbelievable. I wouldn't advocate it. I wouldn't recommend it. It was awful. I felt like a 90-year-old man. Now I feel like a 40-year-old. Because in October, at the end of the month, when I was so ill, I was, and I was bleeding from my nose, I had, I had incredibly painful headaches. Like my head was going to burst. And it did burst because out came blood from my nose. On the Sunday morning, I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to the house of the Lord. She says, you can't go like that. I said, I'm going. Nothing is going to stop me going to the house of the Lord this morning. I didn't say church because that's not my concept. I don't think like that anymore. I'm going to the house of the Lord. Big difference, big difference. We've got to change the way we think sometimes, right? Anybody with me on that? We've got to change the way we think. Change the way we view things, right? Not be so flippant and shallow. We're going to go to the house of the Lord. I've got to be in the house of the Lord. I came late on purpose. I, I phoned up and said, please s save me a parking space, otherwise I'll never get in. The guys were great. They were brilliant with me. I dotted my way down the middle aisle. I came to my seat at the front, which would be like where you're sat, this young lady here. What's your name? Aku. Right, where you're sat, Aku. That's where, like, I would sit on the end there because I'm always up and down like Matthew, up and down, up and down. And I came in, and one of our team was playing the keys. The worship team were playing just like the team just now. Worship team need to hear this. You're not performing, you're ministering. There's no entertainment value in what we do. I'm not interested in entertainment and performances. Ministry. Ministry changes lives. I walked down the middle of the church. I could feel the presence of the Lord, heavy presence of the Lord. When I got down the front, they were singing that song, and he shall reign forever and ever. Do you know that song? And he shall reign forever. The presence of the Lord was magnificent. I came down to the front. I couldn't sit. I knelt down. And the presence of the Lord was so fantastic in the house of the Lord I don't know how long I was down there for but I knew this it's going to be a problem to get back up <laughs> and I stayed and worshipped and worshipped God and I got back up and I was 100% healed I walked out of the house of the Lord with a spring in my step, strength in my body, and I knew everything was fine. And so it was. The third person in my family 
to be healed just by being in the house of the Lord. I am a great believer of being in, the, in Bethel. I'm a great believer in being in the presence of the Lord. I believe when you're in the presence of the Lord, when, which is when God's people, look, God can meet me in my own home on my own. I get that, I get that. But he doesn't do the same things as he does when we meet together in his name, where two or three are gathered in my, not where one. There's a plurality to God's presence coming and doing things when we are together in his name. And God comes and inhabits the praises of his people. So if we're cognizant of that, if we recognize that, if we are aware and conscious of this truth, when we come to the house of the Lord, what can happen? God can do more in a moment than we can do in a lifetime. Praise the Lord. Bethel became a place of rededication to Jacob. He built an altar. An altar to me speaks of, it's not a well. <clears throat> Wells are tapping into a resource that God has given. An altar is something that we build. We choose to build an altar and we choose to place the sacrifice on it. Paul says that, he refers to that in Romans 12:1. Wherefore, wherefore brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God, you would present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. So uh, Jacob does that, and I noticed that the sacrifice is amazing because the Bible says he poured out a drink offering. And as I was saying earlier on, whatever sacrifice you bring, a drink offering, says Numbers 15, all the offerings were accompanied by a drink offering. And it's just incredible, really, that that should be the case because he poured out oil and the, 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 the Bible says he poured oil and he poured water upon the pillar. And, and there was a pouring out at the place. There was a pouring out at the house of God. Surely God is in this place. This is nothing other than the house of the Lord, says Jacob, right? There's a pouring out in the house of God that is unique and special. Anybody believe that? Do you think we should expect more of that in these days? I do. I, I, I think we have a mandate. We have authority in Jesus' name to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit when we come together in Jesus' name so that the nations will know that God is here in his house. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I, I was sharing in Tamil Nadu. I did a mission many years ago with a friend of mine from Bristol in the UK, many years ago. And I was sharing with my friend this mission. I've got many tales to tell of missions in India. I think every village with the pallium, Rava pallium, Ratanada pallium, every Rava pallium, Pala pallium, Tetsi pallium, Satimagalim, all of these, all of these places. I know I've done missions in every one of them. And we did this mission in a place, I can't even remember the name of it, might be near Palachi, somewhere there. And, and the pastor's name, Pastor Solomon, who's gone to be with the Lord since. We did a mission in these, in there, and we opened all the place up to the street. And there was not a lot of people in, there were a lot of empty seats. And I got up to preach, and the Holy Spirit says, don't preach. I thought, well, it should start to pray. So I started praying. Then I started praying in the spirit. And then I started singing. Sing at the melon, palm be melon, nine days sell away. Sing at the melon, palm be melon, nine days sell away. Sultanim Sagela, Valle my de Valla, Hare Karam Yanakande. Sultanim Sagela, Valle my de Valla. I know this is English service. Hare Karam Yanakande, Hallelujah, Anan the May. I sang, sang. People went. White face. Tamil is there. They came in one by one. The place, I am not kidding you, was heaving. And the Lord says, now you can preach. That night, probably for the number of people gathered, we saw a record number of people run to Christ. But not only that, we had a queue for people to come to Christ 
and have a prayer of confession over them so that they could speak with their mouth. That line came for salvation and then Hayden prayed for them. Every single one of them received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I have never seen anything like it in my life before or since. Just amazing. Why did I say that? Because God can do more in a moment than we can do in a lifetime. Moments. Life is made up of moments. You've got to believe that God has your moment written down already. You need healing. God has a moment. You need an answer to prayer desperately. God has a moment. You have a friend who needs, to, needs the Lord, needs to come to Christ. God has a moment. There's a prodigal you're praying for. I want to tell you now, God has a moment. God has a place. God has a purpose, but he's also got a moment. He's the God of all the times. Our times are in his hand. Do you believe me? Bethel, the house of the Lord, a place of dedication, a um, place of consecration. Um, I love that. Set apart. This place was set apart. Jacob is set apart. The Lord actually says to him, you know, Jacob was already renamed Israel, but nobody was calling him that. He, he was given the name Israel before, but nobody was calling him. He says, from now on, people will call you Israel. And so it was from then on in. People referred to him as Israel, the children of Israel. We hardly ever use the term the children of Jacob. The children of Israel. Correct? And so from then, there's a time of consecration that came. Last of all, there was a, it was a place of restoration and renewal. And I love this. This particular passage of scripture that we read together is linked in to the covenant that God gave to Abraham and to Isaac and it's linked into the territory and it's linked into the land and the promises of God uh, and, and it, he, he goes on to say listen this is what the Lord says he said God said to him your name is Jacob your name shall not be called Jacob anymore but Israel shall be your name so he called his name Israel and God said to him I am God Almighty be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company or group of nations shall come from you rulers shall come from your body he says and he says you will be blessed and he, he, he says this place where you are I will give to you and to your descendants I will give you this land whoa now if you were to go back to the original time when Jacob went to Bethel in Genesis 28 listen to what listen to what Jacob says Genesis 35 is about what God said Jacob 28 is about what Jacob said let's go to it and there's a reason why I'm, and this is my last point but I, I, I want to I want to end up on this point the Lord this is what Jacob he called the name of that place Bethel but the name of that city had been loose previously the, the house of the Lord go a face community church the house of the lord will change the very locality you're living in does anybody believe that yeah. or are we going to pack up being salt and light the, the fact that you're here we have to see god change the area change the communities around and about us and I know that even all of our good work and all of the humanitarian stuff that we do is fantastic and everything but but it's only brilliant it's only brilliant if the kingdom stamp is upon it it's all to do with the kingdom and and listen to what Jacob says Jacob made a vow at Bethel the house of the Lord if God is will be with me if God keeps me in the way that I'm going, if God gives me bread and food and clothing to wear, and if God enables me to come back to my father's household in peace, and if God does this, and if God does that, and if God does the other, then I will follow you, Lord, and I will tithe to you. Jacob's a deal maker. Eh? he's making a deal with God 
If, Lord, you do this, you do... Do you ever do that? Praise God. But there are a lot of Christians do. Lord, if you bless me. Lord, if you give me a nice husband. If you give me a beautiful wife. If you give me a great job. If you give me a promotion. If you give me a better bank balance. If you give me better grades. If you give me better opportunities, better prospects. If, 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 if. God is not bothered about your ifs. God is a God who gives covenants. It's not about what I say. It's about what he says. It's about what he says. Look, imagine saying that to the Lord. And if you do all of that, I'm going to give you a tenth of what I get. God is giving you what you're getting. How can you say that? You, your, very, your very life, your very breath is coming from the Lord. How can you, how can you, if you do this, if you do that, if you do the other, if you do it, give me this, give me that, give me that, give me. Commercializing, monetizing God, I hate it. Amen. I hate it. Amen. God is not there to be some commodity, some Santa Claus, some genie in a bottle. He is a covenant giving, covenant blessing, covenant keeping God. And I need to come in and understand by revelation what his covenant is for me, what his call is for me, what his vocation is for me. And I need to walk in that if I'm going to get his blessing. He doesn't have to do anything for me. I must do something for him. For he must increase and I must decrease. That's the deal. There is no other deal. The Lord says, those who humble themselves, I will exalt. Those who abase themselves, I will lift up. We kind of forget it. And the bigger our churches grow, I know we, Matthew and I speak about this a lot, we must walk in humility. We must walk in, in, in the ways of God and be humble and seek that our people see humility in our leaders no arrogance, no pride should be found. I speak on this all the time with my pastors. Let us walk before the Lord. Let us never become pompous. Let us never become aloof. Let us love our people. We are shepherds. We must smell of the sheep. We, 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 we are shepherds. We are walking side by side with the sheep. We are not better than them. We are not different from them. We are called with a mighty call to lead our people into, into the paths of righteousness. And, and, and may I just pray a prayer over this house. God, will you bless this house? God, will you bless this house with your presence? God, will you bless this house that as people come into this house with their mess, as people come into this house, O oh Lord, with all their baggage, all their luggage, as people come into this house with their depression, as people come into their house, Lord, with their bondages, as people come in with their addictions, when people come in with their weaknesses, with their failings, as people come into this house with all the confusion and bewilderment, as they come Come into this house with the turbulence and anxiety and stress and no peace. Then, Lord, when they pray, when they pray in this place, Lord, will you hear from heaven? Will you hear from heaven and release upon them forgiveness and blessing and favor, a covenant keeping God who will be in your house for your people? Let us see, oh God, a way open into heaven. Angels descending and ascending from the house of the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I pray. Lord, I pray that the house of the Lord will be adorned with salvation. The house of the Lord will be adorned with restoration and renewal and reconsecration in Jesus' name. I pray, oh God, right now, that many, many people in this city and beyond shall find you in the house of the Lord. So that they could say with David, and I can say it this morning, I can say it with all my heart. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes, 
and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever listen this isn't going to church on a Sunday morning I'm not going to dwell in the church on a Sunday morning forever that's just too boring I'm going to dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever in paradise in in heaven where the Lord's throne room is um, I often say to my I often say to my, my wife when I get to heaven I'm never going to get a mansion some of you will get mansions some of you get villas some of you will get a garage some of you will get one by one uh, some of you will get big castles some of you may get regions and provinces Pastor Matthew you know what I'll get I'll get a flat pack with a set of tools and the Lord will say there you go get on with it Paul <laughs> I'll get a set of drawings and say there you go you go and build it it's, this is a great house Paul but you'll need to build it okay so then I'll have to get the angel Gabriel and Michael to give me a hand or whatever praise the Lord what he's waiting for us who love Jesus come on this, this life down here is living in a garbage can compared to what we've got waiting for us. So listen, guys, if you're suffering, if, you, if, you, if you're in situations that's really bad right now, my heart goes out to you. Listen to you. I want to tell you this. All of the best things you've ever, ever, ever craved for, wanted, everything out of this world stuff is waiting for you in Christ Jesus. And I can still say this. When my brother was dying, terminal illness, I could say to him, the best is yet to be. I could say to him, I walked that walk with my brother two years ago when he was dying of terminal cancer. And I could say to him, the best is yet to be. The best is coming. Your best days are ahead of you because absent from the body is to be present with the Lord in the Lord's house forever and ever and ever can I ask you to get a zeal and a passion again for God's house don't come into this house lightly huh? I tell the lighthouse back home stop being the late house you get it? Lighthouse, late house, late, light, no, no, sinking in, sinking, eh? Lighthouse becomes late house. Let the house of the Lord be important to you. Not, not church attendance, I'm not talking about that. Don't flip, flip the concept. Being in the house of the Lord where a moment can change everything. Wait for your moment. God is a God of moments. If you believe, all things are possible. Can we stand, please? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I bless you. Lord, give you praise, give you thanks, give you glory, give you honor. Who is like unto you, Lord? Jesus. Sometimes there is a going back to go forward. Do you know that? Sometimes you have to come back to Bethel to go forward. Is there anybody here now? Just bow your head in prayer with me. There are a lot of responses to this in the, the last service. I don't know, not in the Hindi service, English service. Do you need to give your life to Jesus? Have you ever given your life to Jesus? If you've never done that, you need to do it at some point. You need to be born again. If that's never happened in your life, while every head is bowed please I want you to raise your hand and wave it to me if that's you is there anybody here thank you so much that's great anybody else put your hand up wave to me if that's you there's somebody else you're battling you're fighting come on have to have the courage wave to me wave to me come on where are you I've seen your hand it's great there's somebody else somebody else thank you so much it's great brilliant well done is there one more person 
I want to speak to those people, you need to come back because you once knew the Lord, you were on fire, you were red hot for God, but now, oh dear, one foot in the world, one foot in Christ. It's time to come back to the Lord, back to Bethel. Back to Bethel. Is that you? Do you need to come back? Yes, thank you so much. Put your hand up if that's you. You need to come back. You need to come back. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna prolong this, but if there's anybody there, you need to come back. Come on. You know you, you, you are behaving like a prodigal. You need, you need to come back. Is there anybody? Thank you so much. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Thank you. Anybody else? Put your hand up. Wave to me. Wave to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. Come on. Let's give God some praise in this place. Let's give God some praise in this place. Lord, I pray right now. Can you pray with me? Everyone who put their hand up, in fact, every one of us, can we, can we verbalize, can we say out loud a prayer? Lord, in the name of Jesus, say that with me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I give my life to you again. Lord, will you forgive me? Bring me back into your presence. Lord, I want to be used by you. I want to live for you. I want you to live in me. Forgive me where I need to be forgiven. Cleanse me where I need cleansing. Make me whiter than snow. Thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life for me. From this day forward, may my name be written in heaven's book, in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you all. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. I'm sure that you are blessed with the word this morning. How important to be in the house of the Lord. I want to read one verse and we sing one song and we glorify God. It says in Psalms uh, 26, 8 says, O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. And this is the place where God's glory dwells dwells and the bible says where two or three gathered there my presence will be there and we heard that when god's presence comes everything will be changed what we are doing it for all here he will do it for one moment that moment can be we are gathering together let us sing this song and glorify god thank you lord Hallelujah, let's sing the song. Oh, river of God, flow out on me. Oh, river of God, flow out of me. Oh, river of God, so good, so free. Oh, river of God, I cry to be. We sing, O oh, river of God, flow down on me, O oh, river of God, flow down on me, O oh, river of God, so full, so free, O oh, river of God, I cry. Oh, river of 
Father, once again, we want to thank you for this morning and all that you heard our prayer, worship. Lord, you spoke to us very specifically how we should take the house of the Lord seriously, Father. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Paul and his ministry and his mission, what you've given him, the passion and Lord, the compassion for the lost soul. Father, thank you for his life and the family. As he serve you, Father, you will fulfill all his needs. And we as a church, we thank you, Lord, for you brought Pastor Paul to speak to us how important to come to the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, you're going to bring a new things in our life. Lord, when your presence comes, everything changes, Lord. Even as we go, Father, let this word, let this word be saturated in our heart that we ponder, we meditate on these things, and Lord, our life will be changed. We commit all of us together in your hands this week, Father. You will bless us with more for your presence, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week. Thank you. <laughs>